well, here, here I am again. This is like day three of this one turning. Uh, day three, not consecutive, you know, Monday, Tuesday, no, uh, skip, but it's my third time into this uh, shed working on this uh, one project. And uh, it's taken a lot more than what I wanted it to. But I knew it was going to be the most aggressive, most time extensive project that I've ever tackled because it has a lot of different components going. It's a jar. Um, oh, I always forget the name of this jar when I get out here. But it's a it's a, a vase style with a neck and a lid jar. It's called a jar, uh, not a vase. So at this point, I want to go right to the lathe where I took off last. And uh, right now, I have the middle of the body and the upper part. It will still need the neck and the lid. And then I got the foot, which is to go on the back over here with a transition piece between the foot and the body. The whole piece will end up being about uh, 13 inches tall. When I was here last time, even though this ring was not really what I had, Envision. I modified it slightly by alternating the diamonds, and it makes it unique because I haven't seen any anybody doing both this method or uh, this pattern. And uh, th this pattern has been—it was a little bit of a challenge, and I would not say that it's for everybody. Um, and I'm not so sure. I feel right about it. I could have done them all up at the top or all at the bottom. Um, and either one would work. But this kind of worked for me because it puts each one of these groups, every other one, lined up exactly with this featured ring that's underneath. Coming up, making the sidewalls per se of a house, almost, on this end. And then the points on the opposite end aim directly towards the center of the alternating. So even though this was 12 segments on this particular ring over here, this eight segment piece worked out fine with every other one. So it was a accidental good thing. I'll work on this for a little bit in this orientation.
anyway, I can address right now mounting mounting a base on this that's going to make the transition and connect to the top and the bottom. I already have a good mortise here to accept whatever I put in here and that will be made separate by itself basically and then when I have it all together I'll just mount it and shape this up to contour and be all part of the piece but for now I need to reverse this and start working up on the neck area which is going to require a little bit of work on this end Now, I could stuff that up if I'm concerned with, uh, which I am, uh, this, the jaws crunching, crushing the wood grain and cutting, uh, splitting, because this is all side grain on all the pieces. I don't have any piece that's end grain, so it's a very touchy type of a tendon to create whether if it was a tendon or a mortise it's not going to change much you either putting pressure or you're putting expansion on segmenting I don't advise you put anything on expansion because you have a chance of opening up any seams so basically I have from here to here established I want to open this up more or less in proportion to what I got here on this drawing. <clears throat> and if you know, I did everything basically three times the width that I got here, more or less, to keep it in proportion. So, width on the drawing, I have two inches. I have six inches on the, uh, the piece. To this top over here, to this base, I have two and a quarter inches. Oh yeah, uh, about two and a quarter inches. So I should have six, almost seven inches in this height. And I got, I have about six and a half to here. But that's going to go further back. It's The neck is going to be roughly there because the neck I got almost one inch. I got three quarters. So three quarters and three quarters is one and a half. Plus three quarters, it should be two and a quarter inches diameter for that so that will tell me so basically the neck is not too bad it's uh, going to start off right about there so with that being said now this piece is not true center so that tenon will throw me off so rather than force it I will run it and uh, true up this hole so I can put the tenon in the uh, life center in there for a little bit. And I think since I'm working on this and uh, there's a slight chance that it will hit it off axis, I will run my, uh, I'll run my steady rest on this. Make sure that I don't have a problem while hollowing this out and fitting a piece into here. This will be coming off the lathe pretty soon to, uh, because I'm going to make a neck piece for this and actually insert it and make the, the bottom piece, insert that and then work the rest of the piece with the steady rest in place. I still have a little bit of a transition step between this top ring and this wooden one. I gotta be careful between the two because this will lead up a lot quicker than this. So I gotta feel it with the tool and just dig up from here to here.
quarter of inches so I think at this point it's safe to say I can uh, literally make a neck for this that's gonna fit yet I'm not going to be putting it in right away I will wait I will uh, wait and uh, placing it in permanently because I can still use this even though I just said you shouldn't do Thing on the expansion mode because you have a uh, chance of splitting up the seams on the wood but I'm gonna I might need this piece here for a while I will fit it all and dry fit it and then put it aside at this point because like I said I might need this and then when it's all assembled I can very well place it back in and just sand it and buff it without cutting uh, and relying too much pressure on anything on this. Time to remove it and work. I'm gonna work on the neck next and I might make the transition piece for here at the same time. fit into the neck this is what I need and all I got is about an eighth of an inch to take off on maybe close to a quarter on both sides so I will lightly take this down into that uh, to uh, make this part fit into that neck area see that by undermining that by undermining it it sits tight against this seal so 
I will go with my square tool, make this wide enough, make the tenon to the same depthness as this, so that will give me the shape, the contour that I want for this part right here of the neck. And I might do that before even going in there, and then I will part it out over here. So the lid, according to this, is actually sitting on the inside and not the outside. And what I was just doing here would force the lids to be over the size of the neck. But I can still maintain that to be that way by shaping this up to do a little bit of this curvature that I want here. So. I'll do that before parting this off. And again, I'm not doing this for a display piece or for a wow factor. I am doing this to give you guys different options and different ways to look at what you can do for your turning and not necessarily to wow me on anything that I do. Um, I mean, do I try to make something look good at the same time? Absolutely, but uh, that's not my goal is not to have a wow factor but to have a wow impact on you guys on whether if you like what I'm showing or not. I'm going to make the piece to go into the base as well. So it's time to go in there and start making. First thing I need is a tenon to go into this mortise. Okay. So I will reshape the bottom of this. I don't have an option. I have an option, but I would not want to take all of this apart just to redo that. So this has room where I can take it down, make the concave all the way down over here, make a little diamond shape right here, turn it back in to come into my and the foot base, I can literally just make a mortise on this part but I have to flip it. So I'll fold a piece of paper towel, maybe two times. Seeing that I, I do need this tenon here, but I need to prep it and make sure that it, it is a size that's going to go into the base at the very end. So I'm going to
Well, I think. See, and I can still put this up this way. I think that this is ready for me to uh, put these two pieces together and shape and give this piece a, a final shape. You can see that it's way off proportion on what I need it to do. So I will shape this up nicely and uh, by going this way with it and bringing my life center on this end and uh, as well as my uh, steady rest. Of course, when I do that, I gotta make sure that I match up my uh, segments going up in the same lineup. Of something. Uh, whether if it's the diamond with the diamond, this one with that one, and that's the, the route that I'm gonna go is matching up this line with this line, which uh, it's smack center with this one over here, so uh, that's a good way of doing this. I could uh, put it in between uh, centers for a little bit, just enough to, uh, to make sure that I am centered with this. It's pretty well centered, so lightly I'll go in there and start shaping this. five minutes or so. So I'm gonna go easy and uh, shape up, shape this to have some sort of a symmetry, a connection with each other. Body, what I got here is Ipe for the base, the body, and this upper part. Mango for this part right here with the lid and finial, and this nub over here. The center is something that I was playing with. Um, I already had this ring made up here that has these lines which work out pretty well. It brings up the, the, the spaces right in between this triangle, making it look like a house. And then the other one is offset smack center with the upside down one. It was an interesting project, to say the least, just on this featured ring. I had to figure out what I wanted to do that would be a little bit different and that it would work. There was almost a time that I almost discarded this. I was very tempted to discard it and make it traditional, which is a lot more work than what I wanted to do. And what I try to do with my turnings is show the easy methods to a lot of my turnings. All of this was done up to this point other than gluing this piece together. My video card went empty as I was working on the lid. And the lid, basically I had a tendon on the back side, mounted it, shaped it. Uh, actually, had a tendon on this side, mounted it into the truck, hollowed it out, shaped it, sized it to fit this ring that I already had made up. And then when it was all said and done, I put it back into the truck on the expansion 
on the expansion mode from out here and I finalized the top and the finial. This used to be the tenon. So I finalized that and this is what I came up with as the overall shape. The whole piece I think is pleasing both in proportion and design. I hope you like it. Don't forget, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe and give me a thumbs up but share it with your friends. Sharing is how word gets around and other people get to see it and they might like it as well. Well, thanks again. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for taking the time watching and thank you for all the comments, the wonderful comments you guys leave. Uh, leaves me overwhelmed on the beautiful sayings, you know, and the motiv uh, motivation that supposedly I give some of you to go out to your shop and turn. Turning is the fun part. Recording is okay but I feel that if I'm encouraging one out of every hundred or one out of every thousand okay to go out to your shops and try something different or something new or realize or get some of you to realize that you don't have to buy the best of everything to be able to have fun and that's the whole thing have fun and create something Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again very soon. The lids did not work exactly as I... Uh, let's put it this way, I should have looked at the glass piece a little bit better, and today, when I went and emptied out the cards to do this uh, session of recording, I looked at it closer, and I realized that it looked like it sat like this, but in reality, it did a bulge out over here and this type of a profile. It would have made this top look better than what it did. Because I didn't realize it, I thought, because it, I just drew it up while it did. the thing was far away from me. I looked and said, you know, I want to do that. I want to make that. And I just drew it up and not going to pay attention to this little detail and um, yeah it was it's one of those areas that I wish I had looked at it a little bit better because I would have rounded this off and I had the material uh, it's just I was trying to uh, make it as close as I could to the original piece and yet I do something like this huge flaw well you know we'll leave the perfection for the next one. For this one, this is what it is. Thanks again. We'll see you very soon.